we're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. Our academic and applied esports program provides our competitive gamers a national stage to compete with other Division I universities. Our academic objective allows us to use esports to foster innovative interdisciplinary connections. Esports right now is an ever expanding career field, and having the opportunity to showcase its many facets through education is really inspiring. Welcome back to the EGF Power Series. My name is Wes Rambo, and I'm joining Worst Cast, who's doing double duty all day long. And uh, Worst, we are going right on to Marquette versus Idaho, uh, no. because Iona Delaware, uh, well, that one, uh, failure to launch on that one. Yeah, Iona had to forfeit, unfortunately. Obviously, still more matches to play. And it was to Delaware. Um, their main competition in that group is Marist. Obviously, getting a win over Delaware, even if it wasn't as likely, could have helped propel them. But nope, we'll have to forfeit that win. Delaware taking that win and basically kind of almost cementing themselves in that first place position so far. But now we move on to another group composed of Marquette, Idaho, Washington State, and William and & Mary. We'll see two of those teams. It'll be Marquette versus Idaho here, and it will be an uphill battle to say the least here for Idaho. Absolutely. Marquette looking like one of the strongest groups in this, or strongest teams in this group, pardon me, looking very, very good. And we've seen quite a lot of Marquette on stream already. And you uh, of Idaho, worst, maybe you can tell me a little bit more because I th this is a bit of a blind spot for me, this, uh, this Vandal Esports team. Yeah, they have... They have really nice ideas. I, when I last watched them, they were going up against a much, uh, I would say, mechanically superior team. Um, but the ideas they were bringing out are things I actually would like to see a lot of these upper tier teams uh, uh, kind of incorporate back with them because they were, it was uh, kind of in, in, in just the outside view of it a very brutal loss but really when i was watching it on, on the stream it was like it was fine i was like what i was watching was like these are some cool ideas it's just they can't hit the shots or execute afterwards but um definitely have a fighting spirit in them and had some cool ideas maybe things have changed since last i saw yeah we will see and we'll see what U of Idaho are able to bring against one of the strongest opponents. Now, Marquette, we can get dig a little bit deeper as we wait for the uh, map vetoes to start coming through. We can talk about how MGE Migs is a player who has not played in the previous tournaments, is coming in. Uh, I have yet to see the lobby to see exactly who MGE Migs will be replacing, but that is something to watch out for as well. What they did before was... Uh, what the, in the match that I actually saw or casted with them is that they went on to split and they went double controller, Viper, Viper and Omen. So we'll see if they continue on with that sort of defensive controlling setup as we get on to split and we're waiting for the maps to come through here, unless if I am missing them here, but uh, looks like map vetoes are getting, getting going. Yeah, it's going to be Ascent is going to be our map of choice for these teams obviously breeze and fracture and icebox going to be these three maps the kind of the newest maps all being taken away whereas ascent one of the older guard is going to be remaining as uh definitely going to be interesting to see how ascent plays it's been it's been one of those maps that's not like solved but is definitely more confident for a lot of people and it's actually going to be the yo coming out here for idaho mm. I, I believe i saw that before from them if it was the same team but uh, yeah, I believe that was the, the team I saw bring out the Yoru before and did have some pretty cool, interesting stuff with it. All right. So Yoru and Reyna coming out for Idaho. Definitely not standard in terms of a double duelist comp. And even then, double duelist isn't always what you see on Ascent. So going to be at least very exciting to see what University of Idaho do with these very volatile agents that they're bringing to the table. Over, the, over on the other side, a little bit more standard. We've got the Killjoy already locked in. We've got Myrova coming through on the jet. That's going to be the lone duelist, it appears, as Dog Select likely to pick up agent. that 
that Sova and there is the KO as well. So yeah, you couldn't be more different these two compositions. And this composition here from Marquette has kind of uh, defined the new meta, quote unquote. I mean, this is kind of going back in a little bit of history, but there was a very long period of time where there was double, triple duelists. I mean, even sometimes some teams pushing it further than that, they were like, we're going to go all in on the duelists. And then you had some teams that were like, we're going to do no duelists back then during this heavy duelist. And people were like, you're crazy. Um, and then obviously uh, those duelists started to get nerfs and you started to see other characters come in like the KO, like the Sky. And you started to see people like, OK, we have to lean less towards that duelist style. A double duelist is now more of an exception than a rule, whereas before it was kind of the, at least you had two duelists. And now we've kind of gone back to this place where you typically have one duelist and mm -hmm. uh, tend to not have it supplemented by other ones. And, you know, something that we got to point out about Idaho's comp as well. Look down that lineup. That is four flash abilities, four ways to deny vision on those entries. They, and with Idaho starting over on the attack side, they could look absolutely explosive here, as well as have some serious firepower on those post plants, because you know they're going to be starting to get on site at some point, heading towards B for now. And it's a full stack coming through. They're only going to be running into blades. Here they come, the blinds already coming through dog trying to get them and gets a lot of info with that uh dart but it's going to be joe trading out dog does take down xander on the way in so they've been thinned out idaho now having to play this post plant a lot of damage done to idaho the healing not enough to get that ranger back to full hp and four man strong retake three are just gonna walk it down that stairway and joe is not where they want it to be i don't think they want it to be in the enemy spawn they're like where is this joe gone Joe they are going to be walking in here. <laughs> so far away and uh, has to get back on. No. Not a chance. So there we go. That teleport did uh, get sent way back to spawn. And it's, you know, it's a good lineup that he had. But yeah, with the herd being thinned out so much, Marquette deals quite well with that attack with, uh, you know, obviously a very aggressive hit towards that B site. And uh, Idaho, uh, even the explosiveness was not able to save their HP bars as they flooded in. So... Marquette go up 1-0 here. Yeah, and I think it's going to be definitely an interesting idea of how this row is going to play. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I was I was kind of looking at it and I'm like, this competition I would not say is good. I would no. say it is a, it, no sentinel. Uh, I mean, it is not very good, but it's definitely something you can use that's like unorthodox to throw people off. And if you are the like the underdog, let's say, in the situation. I think it's definitely interesting to see that that's the approach you go with, which is unorthodox, uh, crazy picks instead of trying to uh, go for some meta idea. Yeah, you know, you can't say it's not likely to throw the team off guard, at least for a little bit, but Marquette already deals with it quite well. Now playing in the anti-eco, and I know we're kind of just closed into this A main area as those SMGs kind of collapse in on them. Pretty easy cleanup over here for Marquette. Going to be able to get that flawless in the second round here. And with Idaho bringing out guns, the question is, do they continue doing these five-player hits towards sites, or will we finally see some sort of default, maybe some sort of lurk or anchor uh, to try to, you know, get a little more depth to their attack? Yeah, and I think the most interesting part is uh, how... We're already seeing buys come in here from MGE MIGs. They're going to buy up a Vandal. They are not going to go for the traditional bonus where you don't buy into the next round. They're instead going to go for that Vandal. Um, they have a lot of money here onto the, the jet, so you're looking for the round th uh, four operator. Mm -hmm. But uh, as well, it looks like we are just going to go for a potential just five-man burst play here onto A once again. It looks like that is what Idaho wants to do. And no noise made, it looks like, so far. But look at that. The zero point going to come out. Who did that reveal? No can come in and try to teleport, trying to get some space, but already Angelo has gone down. That's Patron coming out with the SMG and Patron with another one. The headshot onto Jalback. That's going to really break what the attack was trying to do and all the flashes in the world aren't going to do much if you've only got three players remaining. They do get themselves onto the site, sort of just barely a tenuous grasp, and it keeps getting weaker and weaker as Kelvinator goes down as well. MGE coming out with the Spectre, looking for any remaining attackers. Joe is standing still down in hell here. What can he even do as MGE MiG takes down Xander, who was just jumping and spraying, and Idaho look out of sorts on their first gun round? Yep. And Marquette going to take this one into the next round and kind of just crush the economy there.
of Idaho. Not really going to have much of a say in this next round. They're not going to have a lot of money. And I think... I, I think definitely... I think Idaho has embraced it before in the past when they go up against these top-tier teams. That they, they kind of embrace the difference... Uh, in terms of the expectations for the teams, and they kind of embrace that, and they kind of play towards that, right? They're, that's why they're playing this more silly, crazy style. They just yeah. kind of maybe have a little bit more fun. Trying to get that whimsy buff, as we keep hearing yeah. on VCT. So we will see if it comes into play. Uh, you can look at Patron, though, with all those frags that have been coming in as the A, uh, the first line of defense on A. Uh, that's That Killjoy lockdown is already available, so definitely going to be tough for Idaho to be pushing in anywhere. Uh, likely that lockdown won't be used here on this half buy. And there's Jalbak finally getting something back. That's a kill over towards Cat, and that will kind of signal them to head up towards mid here. Dog's going to spot this up with the drone. Angelo... Goes for the paranoia to continue to maintain this, but the shock dart is well placed. Going to continue to threaten, but Idaho are moving fast, trying to get through towards that B site. You can see Omen is already tucked in with the spike. Dog has a big job here trying to anchor from the spawn area and drops the spike indeed. That's great from Dog, but with the shock dart, with the recon dart out, going to be in a lot of danger. One HP left on Dog as the three versus three comes through. This round is absolutely crazy right now as Jalbak playing close up with the op, and yeah, I. Idaho, never let them know your next move seems left. to be the uh, strategy here. But you can see the spike is in a terrible position for Idaho as the 2v2 comes through. Blades to try to find Xander. It's Jalbak alone with the op. If this peak comes through, Jalbak could find something. But now, blind coming through. The plant has to go down. Only 12 seconds remaining as the two remaining defenders try to collapse in. And with this op, you've got to find something. And Blades has the timing. Idaho goes down once again. Um, Idaho goes down, but nice fight from them. And I've said this before with other teams. There's other teams that kind of disrespected it in a lot of ways and how they were playing, and they got kind of hit on the chin for it. I'm going to say, like, St. John's uh, lost a fair few amount of rounds to Idaho, just kind of not respecting the fact that, yeah, while you may be in, in a lot of ways a, a bit better, they do, uh, they can fight against you, and they will fight back, and they are. Definitely not someone to be traveled with. A, a close round there. Obviously, gun duels going the way of Marquette is to be expected, but Idaho still making it close despite all this. And I think this is really what I want to see in, on the defensive side from Idaho. Like right now, we're just seeing like these five man plays, but on the defensive side, I think was really when I was kind of had some really cool things went up from Idaho in terms of like their defensive uh, threat plays that they had. Right. Yeah, and we could see that, of course, with their ability to take space with this comp. But Migs, what is this from Xander? <laughs> Trying to run through with the knife. But it's the bot and Migs to grab some kills already. Joe coming in with the judge. Fully flashed patron finally goes down on A. And they do have the spike planted. That's a great shock dart. And Dog takes out Kelvinator off the back of it. And Migs to take out Jalbak. It's only Joe remaining once more. 33 HP for the Yoru. One versus four situation. Not even close to getting Migs there and Marquette will go up 5-0. to zero. And the thing with Idaho's comp worst that you, you have to mention is that, yeah, you know, they do have ways to surprise their opponents with this comp, but the energy it takes to continue running wild plays on attack, you know, could come back to bite them, especially with this big of a deficit early. And we're going to try and see um, what, the, what the response is from Marquette. Because once they kind of get down, that Idaho is just making these, like, five-man, like, first plays, running in with the Yoru all in the backside, letting the clone flash them, and then trying out the judge. I really loved that, by the way. That was really uh, yeah, fun to great. see. I, yeah, go, uh, I, that was really good to big see. Big Joe fan over here, for sure. Yeah, big Joe fan. Uh, once you see, like, those kind of plays come out, what is what is the response? Like, a lot of mm. time, it's just going to be, like, just wait for them to kind of run into you, have some kind of utility with the killjoy, maybe a, a, a paranoia on the inside of it. Looks like instead, they're actually going to be often to just take a lot of map control to figure out where they are, because they know they're grouped mm. up. They're instantly going to rotate over to A. Yep, so that was the response it's Teams. Yep, um, definitely. And it, I like how Marquette are playing discipline still in the face of this. You know, we know, like you mentioned, uh, of course, the gun duels likely to go in Marquette's favor, but they're also playing disciplined on the map. They're taking the space they need to. They're, you know, playing the retakes the way they need to, and it's definitely working out so that we can take away, you know, some something from Marquette here, able to deal with a little bit of chaos in the mid-round as uh, they've already found the opening pick. Joe goes down. So
and no Yoru shenanigans will manifest this round. And that's a great shot from Patron to peek right off of the bot there. Hellback is punished with the headshot. Here comes the orbital strike to clear them off site, and it just kind of goes into the middle, but Miggs is playing right on the outside of it. So Angelo cannot get anything. It looks to be potentially another flawless round, and indeed, Blades finishes that one off. So, yeah, Idaho just not finding any space, not finding any momentum whatsoever with this uh, very unusual composition that, I, you know, I just can't seem to stop talking about it, but what else is there to say? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the defining thing right now is the judges as well coming out here yes. in full force. Uh, no alt here for Joe to go backside and try to uh, make someone's day uh, really unfortunate um, with the judge out of out of the ultimate. But instead, going to be looking for a B play here. See the pings coming down. They're pinging out, I assume, where smokes are going to go and, and such. But there's a lot of different pings, so might be a lot of different ideas. But it uh, looks like they're going to be going through, and it's on to Blades to shut this one down. And does oh. a good job of it so far. Blades to get to and also getting a lot of info. There's Dog perfectly ready for that shrouded step as he does eventually go down. There's Kelvinator to take that one out of three versus two. Idaho now kind of stuck in main and you could see the way the spike goes. That was uh, <laughs> that was the omen holding on to that while Shroud is stepping into danger. So Idaho once again cut off from really anything in this round. There's a Bucky in the hands of Xander and a Vandal on the ground up forward, but Kelvinator trying to maybe clear that angle out gets punished by Patron and Xander, not even going to pick up the rifle, goes up with the Bucky and Patron punishes that. Three players remain for Marquette and they continue on a tear. Uh, you know, all the shenanigans in the world, Marquette seem to be dealing with it quite easily and seem to be at, the, at this point kind of realizing, all right, we know how to play against this. I think Marquette is playing against as well. They've adapted well. They know what they need to do. Unlike other teams, I might just be like, okay, we're going to wander out and try to duel yeah. them because we think we're better. Uh, you might get overwhelmed with numbers at that point, right? Uh, but Marquette is just playing it safe. They're trading probably. They got good fundamentals on them. And, I, and I, this is what I love to see for a team that's playing yes. up against a run like this yes. is that you you play discipline against anyone that you you are taking it completely seriously the entire time because it makes a lot of sense. You know, it, it just. If you practice, if you play like this against this kind of a team and don't let yourself like loosen up too much, what happens when you play against a team like uh, a Wichita State? Not in this group, but like, like a Wichita State yeah. that is going to push you and pressure you. Like, this is so important for you. Yeah, absolutely. Keep their, you know, energy up and keep their edge right now, you know, even in a game that might kind of you know, dull their edge a little bit that they bring in. So, yeah, I, I agree. I really like the way Marquette's playing. That's Myrova going out with a bit of a miss on Cat, not expecting that quick run out. So Angelo gets something there, but still a two versus four. And yeah, Idaho just running straight in. They're getting picked off so often. And Miggs takes out Kelvinator, leaving Pizza Angelo with nine HP completely alone. Patron has no trouble dealing with that. And yeah, Marquette, I mean, they've got more games to play. So like you say, Worst, you know, they've got to keep themselves disciplined and they've got to keep themselves playing the correct style of Valorant, the style that they need to go up against a bigger challenge. And obviously, I, I think for Marquette, if you guys want to get some like, oh, you guys don't think, obviously they fell to DePaul in the last prelim uh, in that finals. But before that, they fell to Wichita, uh, Wichita State, I believe. Uh, no, never mind. That was the Delaware that well, fell to them. Marquette fell out on the group stage yeah. to, um, uh, to Wichita it, State. Yeah, to Wichita it, State yeah, was in that group Kansas, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So they, they fell out in a group that has players, has a team that is potentially going to be in that playoffs. Like, so yes. they're going to go to the, want to go to the playoffs. They're going to face up against a team that, that grouped them, that helped group them at least. And they are going to want to fight back because that was a close group. Like, prelim one groups were insanity in terms of how close they were. So, um, they're trying to want to get back into that form up against those teams. But uh, I mean, those classics a little better than the shorty sometimes. <laughs> Idaho are somehow in their best position yet on a full classic round, but. Dog and Migs will shut that one down. And yeah, you know, I mean, I, I don't blame you for going back to the groups because there isn't much left to talk about, let's be honest, in this match. And I do like what you said, you know, about Marquette, you know, having a lot of history with some of these teams that they're going to be facing up against in the playoffs. That's one of the great things about this tournament and this circuit in particular is that all these storylines based on these teams facing up against each other week after week, trying to adjust to one another, trying to sort of establish, and Marquette have definitely established themselves as sort of kind of a middle tier, trying to push against those really top tier teams like your Delawares, your DePauls. And uh, this is the type of match, you know, where uh, Marquette you know, can gain some confidence, try to keep themselves sharp, and trying to get 
get themselves, you know, ready. Try to do what they can in this game to sort of prepare for more difficult matches ahead. And I love, you know, being able to follow these kinds of journeys for a team like Marquette. We're taking this very seriously. Taunt's coming through. Almost one off the oil. Could lead to some shenanigans. Oh, that's not what you wanted to go, Blades. Yeah, that Joe's was going to shut that one down and has the oil now because of it. And so this is going to be a kind of an interesting idea of like, we're going to see them kind of rotate off now and start to kind of position themselves differently on the map. This is not something we typically see. We typically see them kind of commit super hard to the site they want to go to. And now it's on to Marquette to respond. Marquette have read this decently. And yeah, that was Blades actually using that from the shadows, that Omen ult to try to get into that wine area. Oh, Kelvinator's right up close! Kelvinator had the knife out, but runs into Migs in very, very unlucky situation, honestly. Migs will find the headshot there. Here's Dog holding that operator and trying to look into B main. So they have read this decently, but it's only Dog. Has played very, very well from this position. Able to get a lot of kills exactly from spawn like that and it does manage to get one more even after being flashed there's xander going down it's the spike going to be planted but both players know it's pizza angelo going down to dog as well the hunter's fury will finish that one off and joe hasn't even planted the spike just waiting with the operator trying to find those kills the spike has to go down here there it is but close range with the op trying to no scope gets one they're going for the knives this is absolutely descending into madness right here the knives are out for both Myrova gets Joe and Marquette gets to 10 as the defuse comes in. The first real thing of chaos we've yeah. seen from Marquette. I mean, that was about the, the, the most we've seen them kind of descend into madness there <laughs> is on that round. So. You know, you gotta let yourself do one, right? You gotta let yourself have one of those rounds. That, that was a bit fun. A bit of fun for both sides right <laughs> yeah. there. Um, I can imagine how it is back uh, in the back of Idaho in their voice comms talking about what's going on. As uh, We're going to just continue to see much of the same here for Marquette as they look for a perfect half and potentially a perfect uh, perfect map. As uh, they are just really, again, they're disciplined. Uh, and I love to mm -hmm. see it. I, I mentioned this before. I just like to see it because I always talk about a lot of teams that maybe like do weird He's things nice. against other teams. And I'm like, okay, but would you do that against this team? Quote unquote, like th this yep. team, right? Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it. So why are you doing it here? Um, because it, it ends up actually affecting your form a lot of the time. Yep. I know there's some other, other games I've played. It's like, it actually affects your form if you play if you play worse against other people, because yes. then you play worse against what the actual people you want to play playing on. Yeah, that's one of those things that really tests uh, certain aspects of teams is how do you play in matches that you are heavily favored to win? And Marquette's impressing us in that respect. And, you know, we, you may wonder if you're a viewer kind of why we keep talking about this. And it's because there really isn't, isn't anything much else to analyze about this game. You know, the uh, result was clear from the beginning. Uh, although this is a 2v2 in Idaho trying to maybe put themselves on the board here. If Kelvinator gets this pick and does spot it out, so it's only going to be paid who has been strong over on that A site as the Killjoy now forced into a one versus two situation and is spotted out. The info is gathered. So will Idaho finally get themselves on the board? The headshot from Patron doesn't even take any damage and the lockdown is available as well. Kelvinator has not even planted the spike, hasn't even gotten himself on to the site. If you run away here, do you even have time to get over to A? You have plenty. Uh, it, it's a bit of like a, it looks like you don't have time, but you really do, but they're going to catch the timing. <gasps> Not going to catch the timing, but that Ooh. delay might cause them to go back over to B. They still have a rotate. They've got the time. They played it. They have the time for it. They have the line. <laughs> oh, it's close it's though. Close. It's close. Worst. I don't know. Seven, six. It's four seconds yeah, is the yeah, number yeah, you're looking yeah. for. Does he have it? I don't yeah. know if he got it right there. I don't know. We are about to find out. No, oh, they don't get like it in patron. <laughs> It is just the tiniest of margins, and yeah, you know what? I like I like the gumption, I like the risk taking, but it, just that millisecond off, and Marquette stay undefeated in this match. Undefeated in this match, and now they're gonna have to look towards staying that way. It was a close one, but even in the retake, I do think that Patron, with that HP advantage alone, could have could have mentioned it. But with the yeah. operator, it kind of it mitigates that, right? You only need one shot, but again, if you miss that shot, you kind of lose. Just, always yeah. the gamble with it and now we're gonna see again no spike necessary no spike required is kind of the idea of things but the operator already finding its value Irova in an early pick here and blades going for the paranoia just to delay this b hit 
This is as spread out as we've seen uh, the Idaho squad here. As they're already down into the two versus five. I was about to say three versus five, but Blades just gets aggressive. Spike. And it's those headshots. Looking for one more. Nope, Jao Bak will punish a bit of a aggressive oh, wide swing. Moving. And here's Dog, though, jumping across the corner, trying to get those operator kills. San Angelo is going to face up. But now Migs is here for the... <laughs> support and it's Myrova with the blade storm in the end to finish off a 12-0 half Switching and not sides. just a 12-0 half worst but a very fast half because those hits from Idaho they weren't nuanced they weren't uh, measured they were just running in I liked a couple of the executes where they they, yeah. they layered a bunch of ultimates into the back it was fun I, I enjoyed it uh, but now we're seeing five shorties come out here for the mm -hmm. side of Marquette uh, for Idaho not Marquette Idaho, Oof, yep. but for Idaho they're going to have five shorties, and they are going a burst out of B main. And it is going to be a surprise to the first person who sees it. And then everyone else will kind of realize what the what the gambit is. Shorty gang over in Idaho will try to start themselves on what would be probably the most legendary comeback I've literally ever seen in Valorant. So you know what? Props to them. More power Stacked to over them. on B. They've got the read. Here come the shorties. The smoke comes through. Jow back getting in. Kelvinator gets one. Now they know about the shorties. Backing off, but Blades up top. Trying to find more. There's Kelvinator through the smoke. The spike is dropped. If they can recover a ghost here, if they can all stay stuck around. <laughs> Look at the HP bars. Everybody's so low, but Idaho has the advantage. Maybe the only time in this game I've said that. Flash to come through. Here's Migs trying to get some. Nope, the shorty gang continues to establish territory. Dog is there. It's only Patron remaining. Patron has a huge flank. Patron's trying to deny that one round from Idaho, and they've gotten it down into a 1v1. There's Jal back, and Idaho is on the board, baby. Yeah. Yeah. And... It is, it is, it is a, <laughs> a triumphant <laughs> moment for them as they manage to take this one. And now, Marquette, do they force on this? Or are they just going to give this, this conversion away? It looks like they're going to give the conversion, not going to force, not getting to, like I said, not too hubris. Because if this, they lose this, then obviously yep. the economy is broken. So they're going to, they're going to safe play. Marquette, I respect that. I respect yep. that a lot. Speaking of safe plays, Idaho is going with the opposite of safe play. They bought an Odin. First, they picked up an Odin for Joe. So not only playing the Yoru, but buying an Odin on the second round of the half. You gotta love it. There's no spam coming through. So they were waiting for the indication. As a matter of fact, it's Jaobak alone on A who's going to have to deal with this push as it comes through. And Jaobak has to deal with both Cat and Main right now. There's nobody else even close to him for the defenders. A lot required of Jaobak in this position. Zero point not detecting... Him. And so he's going to have to use that Leer. And there we go. Here's the first push. Dog does get the info, but Jaobak gets the heal. Irova and Patron with the classics have already gotten themselves up towards the spawn. Joe with the Odin finally revealing that the huge gun is online. And will they be able to do this retake? A two versus two situation now as Joe comes through 29 HP spraying through, but the classic will find it. MGE Migs to go down to Angelo, who is still on full HP. And can he get it to half? Myrova's on 26 HP, but one shot with the I'm Sheriff the could do it. The stick comes through. He doesn't have the angle. He doesn't have the read. And that's the clutch from Pizza Angelo. Two rounds up for Idaho on their defensive half. And, and But here comes the, 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 the hard part, right? When the buys come in, the purchases come in. But I really like it, Idaho. They didn't just give up. They didn't just, like... I, I saw a game, I believe it was yesterday, where the anime, the team just kind of sat and spawn. It was, it was mm. a bit weird, but... Um, we're not seeing that. They're just fighting to the end. They want to have fun, and they are, they're accomplishing that. They are going to have judges. They're going to have buckies, and maybe maybe can extend this perhaps just a little yep. bit longer. Yeah, they're tasked now with winning a bonus uh, on these you know rough weaponry, so that the is their biggest challenge so far. I guess besides winning one attack half, that was a pretty big challenge for them as well, but Dog getting some info already onto a close defender. In mid, it's going to be Omen revealed. Patron already gets one. Jao back, not quite able to get those shots onto the player in mid. Dog managing to avoid that, and the plant will start to go down. And you can see those defenders are really tied up in mid and B. Brimstone hasn't even started to rotate. Finally, he will. There's Kelvinator coming around the corner with the Bucky, baby. The jumping shot with the shotgun. Myrova, though, going to catch Jao back. That was the only player sort of tucked at A. And here's Myrova. Gets hit by the flash. And Joe 
bamboozles him in a heaven. Here comes Joe, but on that long angle, you do not want that judge. Now it's only Xander remaining, and Miggs takes him out. A 13-2 for Marquette. But you know what? Idaho had fun, and isn't that what it's all about in the end? Uh, definitely a fun one there. Uh, see how that how Idaho does against other teams such as William and Mary and Washington State. Uh, Washington State might might be a bit of a not as bad, but maybe a similar story. But William and Mary might might be a fun one, man. Um, we, I mean, yeah, I mean Marquette looks good. Marquette looks Marquette looks confident. They look yep. disciplined. They look coordinated. I I love to see it. Yeah, like we said, not many takeaways from that game besides happy to see Marquette showing that discipline that we mentioned and, you know, just showing general, uh, you know, good control of the map, good handle on that defensive half of Ascent. We will move on to our next game in just a moment. We're going to take a quick break before we do it, so don't go anywhere.